What is up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Mordheim, City of the Dam. My name is Splattercat, and we are scooping all kinds of warp drugs into our backpack right now because we don't have much options. If we take these, it'll make our life easier Objective later on. Updated. It's also our secondary objective. Secondary objectives are super important in this game because they basically double the amount of resources you get from doing a mission. You want to get shards first, you want to get fragments last, and you want to get clusters. Actually, clusters first, shards second, fragments last, because that's in order of largest to smallest and how much money they're worth. And so these are actually, instead of scoring touchdowns like we would in Blood Bowl, this is what we're trying to do today. We're just picking stuff up. I think I'll probably have somebody watch his back, because he's in a bad position right now, because I got greedy. It happens, though. Sometimes you got to get greedy. I think by this point, the enemy's probably lumped up into an assault force somewhere, which then makes them an assault force for me, because they generate mass amounts of salt from my booty hole. That sucks. Ugh, if we got booby trapped in the wrong spot. I don't make perception checks. That's one of those things you're going to notice about me. I tend to just avoid stepping on things. Right now, I'm doing commentary, though, and that makes it so that I'm very, very bad at paying attention to the shit I should be paying attention to. I may just have everybody stack up and climb up there and gather all that stone so we can get the secondary objective. But yeah, to put that in perspective, secondary objectives are not really that secondary in this game. The primary objective, if you win, you get 2 XP per character who survived and didn't get taken out of combat. If you do the secondary objective, you get 3 more XP. So you kind of want to do the secondary objective because it essentially doubles your gains from any mission. Yeah, go ahead. 70's not terrible. It's not good either, but... Hey, we made it. Good. I am pleased. Now, we need to gather up some of this word stone. And actually, I'm going to focus on picking up the bigger clusters first. So if we can get the shards, that'd be great. Objectives updated. It does give you a debuff every time you pick up Wordstone. It'll either give you a buff or a debuff, depending. You kind of just got to, like, deal with that fact. It's a thing that happens, and unfortunately, I tend to just ignore it and just pick things up because you're going to make the dice roll either way. Part of winning the game is picking up enough Wordstone in order to make it to the next mission and pay off your employer. And so I tend to just ignore it and go for it. Especially in earlier missions, I tend to play pretty balls to the wall as far as that goes. What warp effect did he get? So he does less damage. Oh, never mind. His melee attack cost just went up. And that doesn't matter because his melee attack cost is 2. And he can't do anything with the extra point anyways. So it's not that big of a deal. Probably just leave him standing where he's at. Cover this guy's ass. But that guy's a weak spot right there. If he gets run up on, he's definitely going to die. And it's going to be very, very sad. It's going to make me cry because I like him. His hairstyle, I like his beard. We all kind of look the same, but eventually I'll kind of... I don't know. I'll sort it out. It'll be okay. You know, I don't know where the hell the AI is at, but... It's around... So I'm just going to pick up all this wordstone. I'm going to get the secondary objective done so that... Once they do show up, we can just trounce them real fast. Oh, looky there! We found ourselves an archer! And he's just going to overwatch, huh? Started. I don't think he has the range to mess with me like that. What he'll probably try and do is he'll go through that house down. He'll get up on the roof of that house and he'll try and snipe at us so that we have to jump down from here, take a damage roll, then come after him if he's smart. Still, how much inventory space does this character have left? Inventory is full. I'm glad that they told me that because I wouldn't have known otherwise. Because we have an archer over there. I may... Use one of these high movement characters. I'm going to get you into cover first, though. He's full up anyways, so I'm just going to leave him in cover, and I think it's going to be all right. We need to isolate somebody, though. Somebody's got to go here so that we can end this fight. I love, I've always loved the art style of Warhammer Fantasy, like for realsies. Such a cool art style. How much wordstone did we have to pick up for the second objective? I'm going to grab this one right here. Uh, no, I want the big one. Nope, not the little ones. The little ones don't mean anything to me. That big one right there, though, is very, very important. It's 15 pounds of wordstone. And since when you send, you have to send the wordstone off to your patron every week. And so you want the bigger stacks before the smaller stacks. There it is. And so now he's got a wordstone cluster. Updated. I may also, while we're on the subject, actually, I may just go after this archer full bore and just keep everybody together once their inventories are full of wordstone. In fact, in order to complete this objective, you can carry three on each of these guys. Yeah. 
I might have to send him back and have him drop all the stuff in his inventory and go pick up some of the other stuff. I don't know. We might not be able to do the secondary objective. I think we have to pick up 10 wordstone for it to get there. So, Schwartzhoff's. Let's go ahead and gather it on up here. We got a shard right there. Objectives updated. He's probably going to get zapped. It's very, very rare that they resist it. Oh, he did. He resisted. Okay, I think. Yeah, I think he resisted it. How are we doing on the objectives right now? Six out of ten. So that'll put us up to nine, and then our wounded guy just needs to pick up one, and we'll be okay. So we got to keep him alive. And a few more shards. This is really, really good, because we've already got ourselves, like, 40 pounds of wordstone, or 40 stone of wordstone. I don't really know what the weight metric is. I don't know what the metric system is in this game, or I guess what the, the measurement system is. Still... I think there's nothing but fragments left. Fragments only weigh one stone. Objective so, updated. these are not going to be quite as valuable, but we got four shards and a cluster. And since the first order is almost always 100 stone, I think that'll keep us in good shape. I'll probably just put him right here. I don't think that archer is going to try any shit. I really sincerely don't. Are you all good to go? Or are you full up? Oh, you still got to pick up things? Okay, Objective so pick up another one. Updated. Definitely winning the wordstone rush right now. He took a warp effect, but I'm going to have him follow the rest of this group because I like to keep people together. I, I value togetherness in all this, and then I'm going to have him face this way just in case. I'll have him basically watch the backside of this. Sometimes the AI sneaks out very, very cheesy moves. Occasionally, they'll pull off stuff that like they shouldn't be capable of, and it will frustrate you. I don't know if that Overwatch is going to count. I should probably just have him jump up this way. I don't know if he'll make it or not. And since his health is low, this becomes a risk, but... Oh, good, he made the roll. I just didn't want him to die via climbing. That would suck. That used up all his movement points, really. Oh, okay, that's fine. As long as he doesn't go down, we should be okay. Oh, we found Ferric Renix. He's got guns, it looks like. I think he went Overwatch mode. I think we only have to kill one of them. Ooh. I don't think he can fire a bow. Oh, he disengaged. Yeah, I was going to say that's probably what... Oh, he still was able to shoot after disengaging? Oh, my God. How many AP does this dude have? That's incredible. Oh, nine damage right there. He made that roll, though. Oh, he can shoot through the bit. Okay, so I didn't realize he could shoot through that right there. Well, we got a couple of options here. I think I'm going to focus on this guy, though. Seems like my smartest idea. So let's start from here. We've got an 86% chance to do 21 to 32. Sounds good to me. If we miss, we miss. I mean, we basically... There's no way to optimize your chances of hitting or anything like that, so... Sometimes you miss, sometimes you hit. It is what it is. I will fully admit to the fact that it becomes goddamn infuriating when you miss like 10, 85% in a row. However, really, really, really hoping. You know, I should probably send somebody to help out with this archer. That's what I'm thinking. If I charge him, he's going to have to disengage again. And that allows him to get away to go grab another word stone. The question is, do I charge or do I use a normal ability? So when you're within one circle of the enemy, you can use an ability called charge. Which gives you a bunch of damage bonuses. So... Yeah, that worked out. We'll take him off the grid right now. And so now that he's down, what does he have in his loot? He's got Argus Strikes, Lucky Charm, he's got a crossbow, he's got a spear. The crossbow would be worth bringing if I had the space for it. Meanwhile, that guy over there, we got to stay on him. So I'll probably just end the turn right there. There's not much I can do. This poor bastard over here is pretty whooped up on. Basically, I need him to gather Wordstone and then just run the hell away. Because if he dies, we fail the secondary objective. And I can't fail the secondary objective right now. So my overall goal would be just to put him in a house somewhere. 
and just like really, really hope. He's got a bolt through the side of his head. Like, how you feeling right now? I'm like, ah, left eye's been bothering me a little bit, but otherwise I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good, actually. And the enemy failed their route, and so we win by default. And so there it is. The fights in this game can be very, very short. They can be very, very long. They can be very sort of frenetic. They can be very, very fast-paced, or they can just be kind of slow, and you can just never tell. We knocked out two of their guys. We had a pretty good play right there. That's about as well as your first mission could ever go. We got extra rewards, and so our rewards for winning, we got two items. We got what looks like three fragments. We looted four fragments, five shards, and one cluster. And then extra rewards we got for winning is we got Crimson Shade, a bunch of consumables basically. Crimson Shade, Madcap Mushrooms, and Mandrake Roots. If the name is written in blue or purple, it means exactly what you think it means. The game uses World of Warcraft rules for loot quality. So, back to camp we go. The foe upon the field of battle is a great feeling. It is even better when you're getting paid for completed. it. Completed. Alright, so let's go with our post game here. So see right there, a lot of XP for that first mission. It's going to give him a mental advancement. When it passes these right here, you see these little, these little links on the sides. It's kind of like Blood Bowl in that regard, too, where people level up, but they also kind of get better as they do things, I guess. And so, each time you pass one of these little thresholds on the bar, you get a new point. And you get points once you get to the end, too, so that's pretty sweet. We have one guy that I'm a little bit worried about. I'm hoping he didn't get any serious wounds. Martial and mental advancement, very, very nice. Going to be important. Meinholf Schwartzhain. He's got himself a marshal and a physical. Gunnar Lundorf. He managed to survive. I think he was our guy who was super wounded. He got the same thing everybody else got. Every level has different thresholds, so just watch out for that. He got one marshal and one physical. Sounds good. And from the decisive victory, there it is. Oh, really? Because we won, he doesn't get wounds? Okay, that's cool. See, I'm not super experienced with this game, so... We got 11 gold crowns for winning. We got a bunch of fragments. We got shards, clusters... A bow, a shield, an axe, and that's pretty much it. I mean, it wasn't a super lucrative mission, but it might work for us. So when we go back to base camp, every single day you got to pay people. If people go out on a mission during the course of a day, you have to pay them. You do that through the warband menu over here. You can either click them individually, or you can go to the warband menu, and you can just pay everybody all at once. And so there goes 23 gold crowns. As people level up, there's more expensive and less expensive units. you got to pay them more or less, depending. The veteran system over here. This is a series of unlocks that persist as you play the game. And so anyways, as you play the game, you will get bonus XP for winning and doing objectives. It will give you permanent bonuses to where your characters will start with extra XP. Your characters will start with better gear. They'll start with just all kinds of random stuff. And so you kind of just want to keep an eye on these. They make it so some of your characters get extra attack points, things of that nature. Stuff is nice to have. Now that the first day is all done and taken care of, we've got the shop. So the shop, we were able to go here before, but I didn't really give it much of a look because I wasn't concerned about it. Every five to six days, every eight days actually, it refreshes the wares that are in here. And so, you know, take a look around. If there's anything that you want, by all means, go for it. It's, it's up to you. There are good things and bad things in this game. And so mostly what you want to look at are things like swords tend to be very, very useful. So if he's got a sword, we can actually equip that because some of these guys will have weapons on them that lower their hit chance or they lower their initiative and make it so they're very, very slow. It's in your best interest to be fast in this game. The team that acts first and gets the first hit off, if the fight turns into a straight slugfest, which... Sometimes it does. No matter how many tac no matter how many tic tacs you put into this game, sometimes it just turns into a Zerg mob slugfest. The team that strikes first wins, like 90% of the time. And so in the case that that happens, I tend to keep people's initiative kind of high. Let's assign some points. So our leader. I want to give him more leadership. We could give him so if you wanted to see what each of these does, I'm going to mouse over it and you could pause it. I'm not going to explain it, but go ahead and just pause it if you want to look at the attributes. So three, two, one. 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and there you go. If you want to know what any of those stats do, they all do four to five things. You can go through and you can pause it on your own and go ahead and read the text. I'll give you a rough synopsis as I go through. That's going to make it so it's harder for us to route, which I think is very, very important. Weapon skill is the most important for right now. Because we want our hit chance to go up. We want our hit chance and our parry chance to go up as much as possible. Now this can put you at weird odds. 
because you can only use parry or dodge, not both. So you kind of want to focus in one and ignore the other. So for this guy, I'm going to put everything into strength and toughness, or I might just put everything into toughness, I don't know. I'm going to put as much as I can into one other physical stat, and then I'm going to focus on him parrying because he has a shield, and I'm going to use him to tank and spank everything. If we wanted to give him something else, we totally can, by the way. Like, if you don't want him to be sword and board, you can come back up here. We can make him axe and board if you really, really wanted to. He will, however, lose initiative right there in exchange for... He'll lose initiative and crit chance in exchange for getting Sunder, which bypasses armor absorption. And this early in the game, I don't think anybody's using armor anyways. We can give him a secondary weapon, though, if we so desired it. Give him a bow or something like that. Or we could just sell it off. It doesn't really matter. I probably will just keep him sword and board, although it's not a terrible idea to give everybody a ranged weapon. On this side, we've got the Finger Man. Finger Man, I'll probably... You know, his morale is pretty terrible. I'll probably try and raise his morale up to at least 5 before I do anything else. The max level in this game is 10, by the way. But there will be more points to distribute than there are level ups, so... Don't panic yet. Weapon skill, I want him to have a higher chance to hit, and so... There it is, his parry chance goes up. Had he gotten a physical chance, though, I probably would have gone with agility, just so he would be more dodgy since he's using a two-handed weapon and he can't parry anyways. I think, hold on, if I go back... Does this allow parry stance? Oh, it does allow parry stance. Okay. That'd be a lot more iconic if his name was Perry. Let me go ahead and get that done. On this side, focusing on weapon skill, I'm also going to swap out this hammer for an axe. And so there we go. Anything that doesn't lower your initiative tends to be what I focus on. Lowering initiative is... I don't know. I like taking the first turn, so just bear that in mind. He's looking good. We gotta give him an attribute point. I'll probably give him dodge since he's dual wielding right now, and he probably will not be doing any parrying in the near future. You get 5% per point of agility versus 2% per point of weapon, or 4% actually. So I guess you can build the parry stance if you really, really want to. I don't think he can parry though. He would have to have a shield in order to do that, and then we would take that out of agility, and I guess we would focus on... Oh, I don't know. I want to get more attack points, offensive points, but I think you get those through leveling up or something like that. And so anyways, I don't know if increasing his wounds is a good plan. It's only 2 HP. I don't feel like that's going to help long term. That, however, gives you more melee damage, so if you put something in right there, and you put something in right here, it means that your chance of bypassing a parry goes up pretty substantially. His carrying capacity would be kind of cool, too. Let's see if we can get his carrying capacity up. Take more loot out of each and every one of these encounters. This guy, however, I'm going to focus on agility. And we're going to keep him dual wielding. If things get a little bit weird with the guy that we just did, we'll give him a shield or something, and then we'll just make him a parry bot. Unspent points over here. Weapon skill, as always. Agility always tends to be a good choice, too, so we'll go on that one. Get that dodge chance up to, you know, 40-50% before we stop. And that should be everybody. We got everybody equipped now. I think it's going to be about time to bypass a day. You can buy skills if you want to. Every time they level up, they get these little green orbs. You got to spend a bunch of money, though, in order to get yourself taken care of. So just be aware that it is a major investment giving people skill points. And there's so many of them. Like, oh my god. Like, there is so much stuff. So these are all of the active skills in the game. Like, seriously, there are loads of them. The amount of customization that's available in this game is absolutely absurd and to be fair with you I haven't really paid attention to it all that well as far as passive skills go you can there's equally as many some of them give you you know resists and HP some of them make you a lot better at attacking and things of that nature flash parries uh, it, it really it's whatever you want but I would definitely recommend you probably come up with a strategy for each of your characters like a general thing that you want them to be good at and if it doesn't work due to meta that's fine but focus on something. Don't try to make your characters have, like, you know, jack-of-all-trade mentalities. Like, I'll probably focus this guy all on attacking as many times as possible while parrying as much as possible. That's probably going to be my goal for him. Whereas for my dual-wielding guys, I probably want to get their dodge up as high as possible while at the same time just kind of trying to max out their damage. So, there's descriptions for everybody if you want it. I mean, there's so much stuff in this game. Like, legitimately, 
There are a lot of things in this game. I'm gonna start doing customization once they level up a bit, but they haven't leveled yet, so they haven't earned it. What's the name of our war band? Did I ever name it the Sons of Mermidia? I don't know if I'm feeling that. I'm gonna go with an orcish name. The Big Bull Smashers. No. The Big Bull Zogas. I think you could just go with that right there. Perfect. The Big Boss Zogas. Even if I can't play orcs, I'm going to play these guys like pink-skinned orcs. Why not? Might as well. Back to Warband. You can also disband the Warband from that menu if you want to give up and quit. So, you will hit that point in this game eventually. You'll be like, yep, I want to quit. Let's go back to the war camp. We're going to bypass the next day. A new shipment has been requested. Okay, and so Baron von Leitdorfer, who is so much easier to deal with than Baron von Heavydorfer. He wants probably 100 pounds would be my guess. Or a hundred stone. I don't know what the weight is done in this game, so... In order to send that, what you would do, this is how we win or lose the game. So we have ten days to deliver a hundred stone of Wordstone, and if we fail, we lose the game. You can also... Give stuff to these guys right here, to earn yourself more prestige and more money, just in case you need it. And believe me, you're gonna need a lot of cash in this game in order to get by. As you get reputation bonuses with these guys, see these reputations right here? You will unlock all these little bonuses that you get. And so you'll earn more money, you'll get additional days to get done with requests. Essentially, you kind of want these. They'll also give you talismans and things of that nature to make your life a little bit easier. If you're into that kind of stuff. With 10 days left, I'm going to take a look at the campaign map. I don't really think we're going to have much time to get stuff going. We got a Wordstone Rush, and we got a Vision of Dread. Vision of Dread I'm probably not going to take, simply based on the fact that you don't know what side you're going to get. And so with this one, one warband deploys together in a giant zerg mob, and the other one deploys all over the map. And it's a mess. It's basically just the guys that deploy together doing a mop-up job on you. It's ugly. Unless you can regroup, and even then it's going to turn into a giant slugfest in the, middle of the or in the middle of the field. So I would probably say Hunters and Prey is probably the one that I would go after, even though the rewards are... Bad. I mean, we could send out scouts and just kind of see what we get, I guess. We got a normal average average. So each warband deploys in a wide arc from their wagon. Far from one another. Uh... Yikes. This one's the safe option, given how much time we have. I think you should play it safe. This is kind of like when you're playing, so if you've played XCOM, I'm going to use that as the place to start because I think that's going to be the thing that most people have experience with. You, you want to limit your losses, and so you always want to take the easy option in the early game until you get yourself leveled a couple times. Then you can start taking gambles and chances on harder missions where things can go wrong. So I'll probably go with Hunters and Prey. We'll get that started right now. And we're going to keep our team the way it is. Everything's looking sexy to me. An enemy warband is fragmented into small patrols, possibly to try and slip past your own warband and escape with some wordstone. Aware of these patrols, you quickly dispatch your own forces in small groups to intercept them and prevent any enemies from leaving the area without a fight. Alright, so 30 minute load time aside. I'm being hyperbolic right now. Oh, our opponent's playing right now. So apparently we started out mostly around our wagon? Did I click the wrong button and it deployed us like weirdly? I must have, oh we're up against chaos too, they can be kind of a pain in the ass. My suggestion would be that we leave one of our teams over here and this is a wordstone rush so we gotta get a bunch of wordstone to get the secondary objective. That kind of forces us out of our seating here. I was gonna let the enemy take their turn first and then end the episode. For right now I think we're just about out of time anyways. I don't see any wordstone anywhere, which is what I need. We will sort of reroute towards any corner of the map that has freebie wordstone. There's a little bit right here. It's not much though. Since this is a very poor wordstone map, chances are that a lot of the things we find are going to be little sprouts like that one over there. Probably not going to be finding that Tiberium anytime soon. I'd like to see where my team is, too. Because they're going to be falling back and displacing like nasty bastards back towards this direction. I'll probably gather up some wordstone here, so I'll take the fragment for right now. Updated. If the enemy picks up fragments, we're going to have to focus on killing them and looting the fragments back. 
it sucks, but it's just, you know, it's the way the game plays out, so... I'll probably just leave everybody by the wagon then. I mean, just hang out over here somewhere and do your thing. You know, you can open your chest right there if you wanted to do a little bit of mid-combat surgery, I guess. Setting up spots for ambushes, unfortunately, we're a little bit limited as far as that goes. We'll let the AI take a turn here. Looks like he's down at the end of the street, maybe. With the way the camera was looking like it was going to focus. Yeah, he's casting magic spells on himself. I just heard it. So where is our card at? It's got to be over that way, I think. I'm probably just going to focus on evacuating as hard as I can because these guys are isolated as shit right now. Alright, so mine off Schwartzhain. The enemy beacon's that way. We at least need to get guys who are on similar sides of the map back towards each other. But anyways, I said I was going to end the episode. My name is Splattercat. I'll see you all next time. This is Mordheim, the final release version 1.0. I'm sure they're going to be patching it and adding more DLC armies and whatnot. But up until then, I will be disappointed that I can't play Orcs. I will see you all in the future. Hi to everybody.